Abandoned ship, those famous last words no crew member or passenger ever wants to hear. I'm Paul Duval, and you're watching 11 Most Chilling Abandoned Ships on Earth. Ready or not, let's dive in. Starting us off at number 11, we have La Famille Express. While much of this ship's history remains shrouded in mystery, here's what we do know. Constructed in 1952 by the Soviet Union, the ship was first named Fort Shevchenko after the military port town in the Caspian Sea. She began her life in the Soviet Navy as an oil rig service ship, transferring supplies to remote offshore oil wells. Fort Shevchenko was decommissioned in 1992 and later sold to an islander in the Turks and Caicos, where she was renamed La Famille Express and served as a regional freighter ship in the Caribbean. Skip forward to 2004, when Hurricane Francis is ravaging the Caribbean, forcing La Famille Express to drift 12 miles away from the dock, dragging her anchor along with her until she crashed into her final resting place, a reef two miles away from the Caicos Bank's shore. All alone on the reef, slowly rusting and decaying since the day she was wrecked, La Famille Express now serves as a visual landmark for boaters, as well as a hidden attraction for the more daring tourists on the Turks and Caicos Islands. Next over at number 10, the SS Mahano was an ocean liner belonging to the Union Company of New Zealand that began operation in 1905 in the Tasman Sea, transporting passengers between New Zealand and Australia. She also served in the important role of His Majesty's New Zealand Hospital Ship No. 1 by the New Zealand Naval Forces during World War I. The Mahano was converted and fitted with eight wards and two operating theaters, carrying large numbers of wounded and sick troops during key moments of the war. When the war ended in 1918, the Mahano was released from military service and returned to her original owner, resuming life as a commercial ship. Now here's where things get really interesting. In 1935, the SS Mahano was sold to a Japanese company to be melted down into scrap metal in Osaka, Japan, but she never made it to her destination. The Mahano's crew found themselves in the middle of a seasonal cyclone off the coastline of Fraser's Island. Their link to the ship towing them snapped, and they washed up on the shores of 75 Mile Beach. The crew members camped on the shore for three days before finally being spotted by a plane. After multiple failed attempts to fix and refloat the ship, the SS Mahano was abandoned and soon became a sacred gathering place for the native aboriginals. Up next at number 9, in 1968, a Spanish transport ship named Cabo Santa Maria was on her way to Brazil and Argentina with a load of precious cargo, including expensive cars, clothes, medicine, and four church bells meant for a new cathedral in Brasilia. Of course, as we all know by now, things didn't go according to plan, and on September 1st, as the Cabo Santa Maria was coming alongside the Cabo Verde Islands, she ran aground on the coast of Boa Esperanza. Local tugboats tried desperately to loosen her, but their efforts were to no avail, and the Cabo Santa Maria was soon abandoned. Nearby locals used mules and donkeys to remove the cargo from the ship, leaving the Cabo Santa Maria behind to slowly succumb to the relentless wind and pummeling waves. Now over at number 8, the SS America is a ship with a particularly fascinating history. Built in 1940 for the United States Lines as a cruise ship, she was acquired by the US Navy in 1941 to be used as a troop transport as the threat of war loomed large on the United States horizon. During her naval service, she carried a total of over 350,000 troops, which was the largest total of any Navy troop ship in service during World War II. Following the end of the war, the SS America returned to her leisurely cruise days, sailing a US to Europe route, as well as tropical ports in Bermuda and the Caribbean. She changed ownership multiple times over the decades and was finally sold in 1992 with the intention of being refitted as a five-star hotel ship in Thailand, and she was renamed named American Star. However, shortly into the trip, her tow lines broke and crew members were unsuccessful in their attempts to reconnect her to her tow ship. While the crew was rescued by helicopter, the stars did not align for the American Star. The ship was left adrift and she ran aground at Playa de Garce off the west coast of Fuerteventura in the Canary Islands. Within the first 48 hours of grounding, the pounding Atlantic surf snapped her in half just past the second funnel. Nature was not kind to the American star, and very little of her mutilated remains are visible above the water. 
And at number seven, built from white cedar, she started her life in 1881 as a steamer hauling goods between Oregon and San Francisco, then as a whaler in Alaska, next as a service vessel in the Alaskan cannery trade, and finally as a tugboat. The Mary D. Hume, named after the wife of her first owner, R. D. Hume, was finally retired in 1977 after a long 96-year life, only a few hundred feet from where she was originally constructed. Abandoned and forgotten in the shallows of Oregon's Rogue River, the decaying ruins of this bygone steamer can best be seen during low tide, where much of the ravaged hull is still visible. Next over at number 6, completed in Bremerhaven, Germany in 1974, the MS World Discoverer was truly a ship made for, uh, discovering the world. Wow, Paul, that was really original. Constructed with a double hull, she was built to handle the frigid Antarctic polar regions, allowing her passengers to closely observe ice flow movements without fear of the ship suffering damage from minor ice collisions. A small fleet of dinghies would land passengers on various shorelines for observation of local wildlife. Then, on April 30, 2000 at 4 p.m. local time, the world discoverers struck a large uncharted reef in the Sandfly Passage of the Solomon Islands. A distress signal was sent out, and soon a passenger ferry arrived and transported the passengers to safety. The captain then navigated the ship to her final resting place, grounding her in Roderick Bay. Salvage companies found the ship ransacked by locals and other factions as the Solomon Islands were undergoing civil war at the time, and salvage attempts were abandoned after shots were exchanged with the local tribe. And up next at number 5, Empire Strength was built in 1942 in Harlan and Wolf's Belfast Yard. If that sounds familiar to you, it's because it's the very same shipyard where the Titanic and her sister ships were built. The Empire Strength was made for the UK Ministry of War Transport and spent her early life shipping frozen meat to Britain and the Mediterranean. Jump forward to October 15, 1968. Now hailing by the name MVE Evangelia and flying the Greek flag, she was sailing from Yugoslavia to Romania, where she ran aground in the Black Sea off Costa Nesti, a mere 16 nautical miles from her destination. There's an interesting theory that she was intentionally run aground to collect on insurance money as she was swiftly declared to be a total loss. And at number 4, embedded deep in the desolate sands of Namibia's skeleton coast lies the wreck of the Edward Bolin, a German cargo ship completed in 1891. Now do I have your attention? Nod your head yes if I do, because what I'm about to say is extremely fascinating. On September 5, 1909, the Edward Bolin was scheduled to offload equipment for diamond diggers near Conception Bay on her voyage from Swakopman to Table Bay. However, she lost her bearings in a heavy fog and ran aground on a sandbank about 100 meters from the beach. Following a failed attempt to tow her from the sandbank, all 30 passengers disembarked, and over the next 10 days, reports say that so much sand had already settled around the Edward Bolin that it was possible to walk from the beach to the stranded ship at low tide. Not only that, but diamond miners in the vicinity decided she was perfect for a hotel and the manager of the mine moved into the captain's quarters. When mining operations ceased, the Edward Bolin was finally abandoned to the sands. Due to the constantly expanding desert, this iconic wreck now lies several hundred meters inland alongside countless other wrecks in Namibia's skeleton coast. Now over at number 3, we have the Demetrios, a cargo ship built in Denmark in 1950 that you could say had a smoky past, as it is widely rumored that she was used to smuggle illegal cigarettes between Turkey and Italy. On December 4, 1980, the ship made an emergency docking at Jithio, Greece, because her seriously ill captain needed access to a hospital, and shortly after that, her crew was fired. Bereft of her captain and crew, port authorities declared the Demetrios unsafe due to wear on the docking ropes and starboard lists from water entering her hull. And at 12.30 p.m. on November 9, 1981, she was swept about two miles from the shore due to severe weather conditions and drifted to her final destination on the beach of Valtaki two weeks later. Coming down to number two, launched in 1922 in Hamburg, Germany, the cargo ship known as Arcadia was sold in 1924 and renamed Elbing. Then in 1945, with World War II nearing its end, she was seized by the Allies and passed to the United Kingdom's Ministry of War Transport. Fast forward to November of 1960, now named the Francisco Morazan and flying the Liberian flag, she was carrying mixed cargo in Lake Michigan when heavy snow and 40 mile per hour winds pushed her off course into a shoal just 300 yards off the shore of South Manitou Island. 
She was abandoned five days later, and local islanders salvaged much of the cargo over the next eight years until the Francisco Morazan was mysteriously set on fire in August of 1968. Her mangled and rusted hull is still visible today, a far cry from the mighty vessel she once was. And finally at number one, the coaster general cargo ship known as St. Badan was launched in 1937 from a shipyard in Glasgow, Scotland. She was built with a shallow hull, granting her the ability to pass through many areas that other ships couldn't. It's also worth noting that St. Badan was one of the ships heroically used in the famous Dunkirk evacuations during World War II. She was later renamed to MV Panagiotis, and on October 1, 1980, she was making her way to Turkey, carrying a freight of contraband cigarettes. And as she was drawing near the Ionian Islands, the Greek Navy spotted her and gave chase. While the MV Panagiotis managed to evade the Greek Navy, in the process she encountered mythologically heavy storms that swept her dangerously close to Zakynthos, where she then ran aground on the beach. After the crew abandoned her, locals raided the cargo that MV Panagiotis was carrying, and subsequently no official tobacco product was sold on the island for four years following the wrecking. Nowadays, the MV Panagiotis lies abandoned, surrounded by towering white cliffs, left to the unrelenting mercy of winter storms, and slowly being lost to the elements. What would you like to see in my next video? Dive down to the comment section and let me know. I'm Paul Duval, satisfying your curiosity craving. Be sure to subscribe and hit the bell, and I'll see you in the future.